And I thought the hymns in Night of the Hunter were creepy. Welcome to the Daily Neats, a daily look at classic films, modern cinema, and the world of professional wrestling. And today I want to talk about Kevin Smith's 2011 horror film, uh, Red State. Um, like most people, I got into Kevin Smith um, in college. I guess that's what, how most people do it. I don't actually know. Um, when I was in college, I, for the first time in my life, I had inter uh, uh, access to fast, high-speed internet. I can talk today. Um, when I was in college, I had access to high-speed internet for the first time in my life, and I also learned that there are ways to watch movies without paying money using high-speed internet. I don't do that anymore, but I was in college. And one of the first things I did was I went and I watched the, the six Kevin Smith uh, View Askew movies. So that would be Clerks, Clerks 2, Mallrats, Dogma, Chasing Amy, and uh, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. And I watched them in order, and I loved every single one of them. Even Mallrats. And I was like, I really like these movies. Kevin Smith is great. And then I never watched another one of his movies, ever. Um, except Zack and Mary. I think I watched Zack and Mary once. I forgot that was him. Um, but like, he existed in that universe to me, and none of his other movies like ever really entered my radar. Um, until like a few years back, I think I was listening to a podcast, and he was on it, and it wasn't one of his podcasts, which is weird. Um, and he was talking about doing Red State, and it, he made it sound so interesting, and I added it to my Netflix queue, and then I never watched it until today. And my, what a different film this is for him. There is no comedy in this movie. Um, like, there's no levity. It is a dark, it is a thriller, it is a, the, uh, an unsettling movie. But it works. He does it so well. And uh, the scene when the kid is in a cage getting drugged into the church was like, my heart was going. And uh, the preacher's preaching and stuff, and, and it, it was tense. I haven't felt tension like that since the well, last time I saw a John Goodman movie, 10 Cloverfield Lane. And it was really enjoyable and really well done. Um, the movie itself is just a roller coaster. You're introduced to a, a few characters that you think you're going to follow throughout the movie, and then about a half hour in, they're all dead, and you've got this other character you're following, and, and it just... The focal point of the movie moves a lot. It feels like a roller coaster. The tone changes. It goes from horror to like a shootout to like a uh, spiritual thriller to like just a commentary on on the U.S. government post 9/11, and it, it just moves so quickly. But it does it well. Um, every time a new character, like when John Goodman's added to the film, it's like yeah, that makes sense. It's about time somebody else comes into this movie and and and, and changes the game up a little bit, and it. It actually reminded me a little bit of Fargo. You don't meet the, the uh, Francis McDormand character until, you know, the second act. And same with John Goodman in this. Um, but, like, even though it, it felt disjointed and jarring, or it seems like it might have felt disjointed and jarring, how much it changes tone and changes pace throughout the film, it, it worked. It worked really well, um, in my opinion. Um, and I really appreciate, there's too many movies where the bad guy is just doing bad things, but you're only seeing it from the good guy's perspective, and if you try to look at it from the bad guy's perspective, it doesn't make sense. And I really liked that, that long scene in the church towards the beginning when he's preaching, and you know every single um, reason why the, this church, this Five Points Trinity Church, is doing what they're doing. You see every aspect of their side of things. You may not agree with it, and you may not find the logic in it, but you understand why these people do what they do. And you understand how this man has taken control of these people because he is charming and he is very persuasive. And you may not agree with him, but you have to admit this guy knows what he's talking about. and He knows how to take control of a room just by talking and, and bring them in. Um... I realize I haven't explained the plot. Basically, if Westboro Baptist Church had guns, what would they do? That's this movie, and um, this man, the leader, uh, his the character's name is escaping me because I'm not good with names. Um, but he is so charming, and he was so well cast, and his performance was stellar, as was Goodman's. Um, just I really, really enjoyed this one. 
really did. Um, it definitely felt me shook, like left me a little shaken at times, creepy in the right ways. And I like the end too. I like the uh, the. Nah, I shouldn't spoil it. I shouldn't spoil it. I'm gonna spoil it. So if you don't want spoilers, I liked it. See you tomorrow. Um, spoilers. I liked the fake out of the apocalypse because I had heard the story of the original end before I watched the movie and I think I heard that on the podcast in the past where Kevin Smith said like the original plan was the trumpet sounds and then the four horsemen come in and kill everybody but Goodman and that's what I was expecting so when that hat when the trumpets hit I was like oh here it comes here comes nonsense and then he's just on trial and or uh, in a hearing and like and then what happened well I headbutted the guy and apprehended him he was really close to me and it was like oh okay oh, yeah, that took a different different uh approach than I was expecting but I liked it I liked it um great movie awesome seeing Kevin Smith do something that's not a raunchy comedy um definitely still R-rated but not like you know, mall rats or, or clerks. Um, as much as I love those movies, it's nice change of pace. Good work, Kevin Smith. I understand you live on the internet, and there's a good chance you're watching this, so well done. Um, that's all I gotta say about Red State. Tomorrow I'm gonna watch an old film, I think it's a silent film, but I might be wrong, called Pandora's Box. But until tomorrow, like, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment in the comment sections below. Let me know your favorite Kevin Smith movie. Um, uh, follow me on Twitter at Daily Neats, and until tomorrow, bye.